Good morning and welcome to Gulfstream today and good morning and welcome to Pegasus World Cup Day. It's a day we've had circled on the calendar for quite some time. Brian Nano, Samantha Perry with you and you can see it right there. What a shot. It is an absolutely beautiful day here. You've been around here for some Pegasuses both here on the set and uh, in another capacity and I think I can speak pretty firmly this is the nicest day we've ever had. Uh, I would completely agree yeah. with that there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, this is an awesome day. We hope to see everybody out here. The crowd's are already bustling. It is an event here at Gulfstream Park, and we've got a lot going on, of course, culminating with the $3 million Pegasus World Cup, the Rainbow Six. We're going to mandatory it tomorrow. The pool today will be absolutely massive. We're guaranteeing a $1 million in the gross jackpot guarantee. It's probably already there right now. Every right. guarantee we're offering today has probably already been hit. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if $2 million is in the Rainbow Six today. Get involved in it. We've got guarantees galore today that we will talk about, but let's just right get right into it. We've got a world of replays and a lot of content here going on, and the guys upstairs uh, have been great. So we're going to kick things off here in the opener, mile and a 16th on a firm, beautiful, lush turf <laughs> course out there. Uh, early pick five in this optional claimer for the Phillies and Mares. We'll go quickly to my ticket now, and then we'll get into this race. $84 ticket, and as we like to say, we're going to take some rubber bands off the bankroll oh, yeah. today. It's that kind of day. Yep. Uh, these pools, again, you know, this could be a million-dollar pool to kick things off today. Race number two, the top pick is the 11. That is the two, the three-year-old race that Mage came out of to win the Kentucky Derby last year. Race number three, I've got Miss Carol Ann, the top pick. Race number four, the three, Candy Light. And in race number five, that's my best bet of the day, and that is Ice Chocolat, $84. All Let's right. get into it, Samantha. Uh, we got a, a replay to show Big Brass Bed. Now, Brendan Walsh could have a day yep. today. We're going elsewhere, but I want to bring that replay up first because this is a horse you can see here at the back at Belmont in June. This is the last time this course was on a turf here. And uh, you're going to see not ideal trying to loop the field here. No, it's not. That's not how you're typically going to win races. And this is a, a horse that is lightly raced as well. Uh, Brendan Walsh has uh, a, a big affinity for taking these horses that he gets from Chad Brown and doing very well with them here at Gulfstream Park. It's just uh, something that uh, he just runs a little bit of a smaller barn. You can see this horse finishes up well here, but at the top of the stretch, there's not really much going on. No, exactly. And that's not ideal. And hopefully Frankie DeTore, great to see him here today. The stars are all here at Gulfstream yep. Park. Flavian Pratt is here. Uh, he's going to keep him a little closer. We are on the same horse and I we didn't talk about this, but the path to victory is to get loose here for Rosie's alibi. Yeah, this is my best bet okay. of the day today. She's a half to Roses for Deborah. She won yep. She won four in a row on the grass course and stakes winner as well. I like the fact that the, the grass is always going to be there with these horses. Mm -hmm. So you, you run them on the dirt. She did have a win, but uh, she just it is going to be fired for on the on the turf today. Roses uh, for Deborah is a sprinter, so I worried about her stretching out a little bit here. But they've tried, or my race horse probably going to take an underlay price. So early in the betting, yeah. nine to five right now. Scratch the AEs, by the way, in here, thirteen through sixteen. You can see it on your board. They are out early. Picked four time here in race number two, and I'll show that ticket a little later. It'll be on Twitter and all that kind of good stuff. And, and when we're on for the. The, the pre-race and uh, this is the maiden race we mentioned it already that mm -hmm. mage came out of won this race last year moved on and of course ran second in the curl in florida derby and then the kentucky derby as well these are the three-year-olds will go seven furlongs on a fast main track scratch out the nine iron tap and we are we're both we're, we're gonna have a day together or apart here <laughs> or we're not gonna have one tap a kenna for both you and I, Brian Lynch first. -er. Yeah, sh he's got just such a long stride. He's a good looking tappet. He's definitely, f I hope he's as fit as he looks from right. watching those XBTV videos because he looks like he's just super fit. Of course, I'll get a better look at him uh, out on the scale house today. And uh, I just feel like this horse is working so well. And Brian Lynch, he's two for two yesterday. Got my best bet home. Yeah, Brian uh, Brian keeps on keeping on. And good job by you. Thank you. Six to one on that. Yeah, best bet. Uh, we're going to show you a work from Speakeasy and My True. And, and Speakeasy is your morning line favorite, tepidly at four to one. Yep. And we're going to show you why he's not on our ticket today yeah so the inside is my true colors the munnings uh, son here and the outside is speakeasy just a very small horse uh he never could get heads up with my true colors in this work and 
I'm not saying My True Colors is going to just win this race easy. He's a big horse. I think he's almost a little too big. I worry about how fit he is coming into this. Uh, but you can see Speakeasy, he, he's just a fade. He, yeah, he's getting dragged around here. Yeah. And it's Irad, it's Todd Pletcher. They're going to bet, I would assume, they're going to bet this horse and bet him hard. Yeah. Uh, and he's on the rail, and we're we're fading him for right. sure let's show big city because he's the one he's the experienced runner that i think has got the biggest chance i talked to louis Saez after this race he said i just once i got him off the rail watch him going backwards this is kind of wild here he's going backwards louis couldn't he's nothing louis can do he can't get him outside here right and he's essentially going to have to go from last to get around and so he's going backwards right now. And then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of fast forward this replay in a second. And he gets off the rail and he comes flying yep. late. This is Born Noble, you know, the, the, the world's greatest horse here. And he doesn't <laughs> know what he's doing. But he's like, you know, maybe Todd Fletcher, aside from fierceness, of course, now is one of the ones for Todd. That was a huge effort. And yeah. he's got the experience edge. Today. Yeah, that helps a lot. I, I wonder really just how good he is and he might be a little bit dressed up he ran a big sheet number yeah, uh, sure nine did. that day but if you you see Luis Saez he goes to Victory Avenue instead well we got to mention him quickly because that's Gustavo Delgado and Gustavo of course unleashed mage in this very race last year yeah. this horse comes in off two wicked drills and I would assume he's going to get bet today too an arrogate that they paid a bunch of money for yeah I think too much money mm, okay. for, yeah, I just thought, but, yeah I don't see it here uh, he could win uh, but I don't think we've got a mage on our hands. All right. Well, it remains to be seen. It's an exciting one at about 1130. Race number three back on that firm turf course here. Seven and a half. Phil Phillies and mares four and up. It's an optional claimer. This one uh, scratched the four. This is a big scratch. Yeah. And I wondered why she was in here for a tag. Fastest flight. Well, that's not going to happen. I guess the 13 is going to draw in and play. Pete's upstairs coming up. He'll give you the scratches and the changes. We'll go quickly through this one. You've got the 12 towards the outside on top. Spansive, we haven't seen her in a while. She's right. got to get loose in here, right? Yeah, she does. I scratch into her. Okay. So I, this is not not with any real conviction yeah. here. Uh, facing older, I, I just hope that she gets over gets loose that's that's going to be your biggest asset uh, in this spot facing older off a layoff I worried about that I was against fastest flight I didn't like her last race she wasn't bet when I thought she would be and it seems like she's going the wrong way fast Miss Carol Ann for me off a layoff for Graham but Graham's a guy that's going to want to pop and aim on these yeah. big kind of days and Definitely. you know she had big time form at last year and she's on the comeback but I, I expect her to be ready to roll we've got horizontals galore there is a pick four here again Samantha will have that uh, there's a pick five here in race four I'll have that, of course, when we're front and center here. Um, I'll have that as well. We're going to buck 70 on the Tapita here in race number four. This is the South Beach, and, you know, it has to start with Sand and Sea. It does. This is such a really awesome mare on the Tapita here. She's uh, won two in a row, and she's done it in ways that you think somebody's going to catch her, and yeah. they never do, Brian. I think that's a great way to put it, because she's three for three here on the Tapita, and the last two, she's done it in ways where typically you don't see horses yep. winning to Peter routes and that's essentially bottoming out the field right. now last time was a, a almost a public workout they will let, yeah. they, let, they let her go 49 and two they're I not going to let her do that today shame on and everybody in the room that day but the race <laughs> two back where she went 47 and four that doesn't work on the Tapita, right. and she just kept on going exactly, yeah. under Paco. If there's a perfect guy to ride this kind of horse, it is Paco yeah. Lopez. We love the job Paco's been doing. I just, I, I went with my partner's kind of theory here that they can't just keep winning on the Tapita. Yeah. I took a, it's not a huge shot. Candy Light's got a big Tapita race here. That was the off-the-turf Tropical Park Oaks, and now she's with Safi off a little bit of a freshening. Yeah, and it was a really – I saw the work on XBTV on January 20th. It was a really good work by this mare here. So I, I like the trainer switch to Safi. Yeah, Sand and Sea is clearly, clearly the horse to yep. beat. Uh, time passage back on a quick turnaround. We wondered about that. We'll see what we get from her today yep. race number five now we're going back on that firm turf course we're going to go a mile here it's an optional claimer four-year-olds and up we'll scratch the nine stat 
the 13 Kiramata, the 14 Script, and the 16 Na Napoleonic War. And that means Lucky Curl in the 15 is going to draw in, and he feels like playing today. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, good for him. Uh, you are on. We're st I don't want to call it a two-horse race, but I would assume it's going to be a two-horse betting race. You're on the other one. I'm on the, the other one. You're on Mason today. Yeah, let's pull up the replay, yep. and I'll talk about it, because uh, this is a horse that I think he was his own worst enemy this day here. He set quick fractions, 23, 47, and 2. I mean, this is not how you go a mile no. on this turf course here. And when you watch him, he looks so professional, and he's just zipping along. Yeah. Uh, this was just his second start off a very long layup. Watch but here watch too. here. Oh. He's just looking. He's eyeing. I, they know that inside horse is coming, and you can see him turning and eyeballing that horse, and he still is looking at him and lets him right through. And uh, there you go. That kind of cost him. That was in a, a stakes race. He doesn't face a, a field like that, I feel like, here. And hopefully he's got his kinks worked out of him. And that inside horse, Big Everest, owns that, that aqueduct. Exactly. Yeah. Loves it there. Yeah. I'm just on the other logical horse in here, and that's Ice Chocolate. Uh, Irad lands here. Massive drop. You see all the graded stakes races from yeah. Mark Cassie. And what I'm pointing out, this is my best bet of the day. What I'm pointing out is that four-star Dave at Saratoga, the grade one. That's the last time he's been two turns on the turf. Yeah, that's true. Uh, rails at 66 feet. It's yep. kind of hard for his running style for this race, but still, he's the class. I'd like to think with uh, him coming out of the one-turn races, he'll be a little closer right. today, too. I, and Irad knows this, and he better be yep. closer because uh, he's not going to loop too many going a mile no. here. No. Race number six now, the first of a slew of graded stakes races on Pegasus World Cup Day. It is a La Praviante at a mile and a half. Oh, that pronunciation. On the turf. couple scratches in here. Sister O'Toole was a player, so she's out, unfortunately. Sensitivity, I don't think she was. She's out, too. As Well, the six and the seven. Uh, again, not going to call it a match race, but anybody that's not named R. Callie Kim or Ramanja Mia would be a surprise. Uh, let's show them both. Uh, R. Callie Kim first. Devastating turn of foot. Yeah. She does. It's You'll hear from Brendan Walsh talk about her. They were getting her back off a long layoff. You could have taken her for $32,000 <laughs> in Saratoga. Nobody did. And what does she do? She just keeps on going on at four different distances that she's come across here and wins in such an impressive fashion each time. No doubt about it. Now, Ramon Shamia has got a little bit of a recency edge, and we're going to show her, yep. and this is going to be the Keeneland race, the Dowager, where she won easily. More, of, to me at least, Samantha, a little bit more of a grinder. Yeah, and we talked about this, too, because we were saying how when you're playing these tickets, it really wouldn't be conducive to use these two horses both. She is a, a bit of a grinder, I agree. I like the fact that she got that tune-up on the tapita. It kind of gets them a little sharp here. Uh, and Graham Motion is a barn that could really, I mean, they they fire, he fires on days like this. Graham is uh, going to threaten to have a day today. I yeah. don't think there's any doubt about that. The barn has got some very, very live runners and, and none, none more so than her. Let's yeah. jump ahead now to race number seven. And boy, is this a good one on the Tapita. It's the brother race to, uh, earlier. This is the Carousel Club. And boy, will that place be popping today <laughs> and, and tonight. My buddy Calvin Harris is over there. Tonight. Oh, yeah, I heard you're a huge fan. We're tight. Yep. There's no doubt <laughs> about it. Try, try to keep me out of there yep. later uh -huh. tonight. <laughs> um, no, what a huge day here at Gulfstream Park. And Calvin Harris, as big of a, a name there is in, in that genre. So. Don't let him fool you. He just wikipedia it before the show. <laughs> I am in the loop. Uh, this is a good one on the Tapita. And, again, this is the Carousel Club. It's clean. I think is Legacy Isle officially out yet, guys? Are we still sticking him around? Still in right now, but All he's going right. to need a defection to get in here. Yeah. Uh, what a race. Let's just start by showing you, because the gang is kind of sort of all here. Yeah. Uh, we've got, what, Country Dreams, Dreams of Tomorrow, and Skyro in here as well. Uh, finals, yeah, maybe. this is, we talk about this a lot with these Tapita races, that it's whose turn is it? Yeah. Uh, Saratoga Flash was uh, very, very quick on the front end. <laughs> Ambitious. Th yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, you don't see him going 46 like that. I don't think you guys. There's Dreams of Tomorrow finally popping his head in here. Oh, what do you get? I mean, all of these horses kind of just cycle in and out here uh, and nobody in this race to me other than Saratoga Flash was really I mean Dreams of Tomorrow actually ran well but you you can see he's just kind of even paced. Yeah. yeah. Skyro checked a little bit. He I'm did. glad you did mention Saratoga Flash. He really actually ran he ran one of those sneaky good he races. He did I agree yeah when you go back and watch it again yeah. you yeah. 
Now the problem is he's out in the parking lot today. Exactly. You're the, you've got we both have the same horse on top. I'm six nine in here, but County Final, um, County Final is out of the fly the W, and we get to see him play tomorrow on a mandatory day, and that's pretty yeah. darn exciting. It is. Um, that was a good race. He's coming out of. It was a very very good race, and you get Flavian Pratt here today, and I think that that's a he's a very very good rider. I uh, mean, you know, all of our riders here that we have on a day in day out basis are good, but he's a strong finishing rider here. Excited to see what he if he can maybe get a little. Um, what about uh, exact I estimate? Now, Chad Brown got a W yesterday. It was just a matter of time. He might get about seven of them today. Boys, yeah. the barn boys to have a monster day today. This is one of more than a few horses in here that is a guessing game trying to PETA for the first time. Well, the replay we showed earlier with Mason, this was the horse that yep. kind of nosed him out for that second place finish. And yeah, if this horse handles the Tapita, then watch out watch out. but if he doesn't and i feel like it would to take too short of a price on a horse like this but he might just have too much class sometimes they do yeah you know and if you're just joining us on a big day like this and you're not really familiar you got world-class connections here chad brown and of course irad ortiz right. jr these are horses that as she just kind of hinted at underlaid price meaning you're not going to maybe get the value yeah you should on a horse that, quite honestly, he's a very good horse, but he's literally looking up at six or seven horses in here that know exactly what they're doing exactly. out there on the tapita. So he's going to have to earn it today, but I do think he's a player in here as well. I'll give a quick mention to the nine, Skyro. You saw him there. He had a little trip that day. He didn't. It didn't matter, really. He didn't run all that well. I think he probably paid the price for a, a really good effort to back. Yeah, I think so, too. And he's one that has just been a little bit more even. He's paired fours now. Yeah. you got to see him break through if you're a sheep person, whatever, uh, buyer's person, whatever you want to use. You just want to see a little bit more, but the barn is rolling. Yeah, he's stuck in neutral is what she's kind of mm -hmm. saying. But, but Brian, go. Brian uh, Lynch, my goodness. Quickly, here, we'll take a break here. We've been rolling along because the last six are awesome. Three Pegasus races and a Rainbow Six at a million dollars. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. It's tradition. Every year, the stars gather for a spectacle. Stars of the racing world collide to cement their legacy in their quest for greatness. Bear witness as we raise the stakes and shatter the status quo. Watch as the brightest stars in fashion take the stage and we forge unforgettable memories. Be part of this storied heritage. Revel in performances from the superstars of entertainment and the unexpected awaits you at every turn. Join us in this unrivaling celebration where champions ascend and legends are created. This is the Pegasus World Cup, where stars align. And uh, they're off. Back at it here on Pegasus World Cup Day at Gulfstream Park. 13 races, of course, culminating with the Grade 1 $3 million World Cup at about 5.40 in the p.m. A national audience, a monster day here at Gulfstream Park. Brian and Samantha with you. are going to have a buddy joining us in a little bit as well. But <laughs> Rainbow Six time here. Now, don't forget, mandatory day tomorrow. We're guaranteeing a million today. I, I got my money on two million. The poos are going to be so big and massive yeah. today. Quick run through of my ticket here. This is a $60 play. We've got some scratches in the McKnight coming up. We'll work through that with you here. And of course, the pizza upstairs, race number nine, the topic down inside Bluefield. Gonna try to upset the inside information on my long shots in the Philly and Mare Pegasus race. And that is Ruby Nell. That is, she is the six horse in there. And then I'm really thin. I'm not trying to get too clever. I do have Steel Sunshine, the three on top, trying to beat Hajazi. It'll be a very short price. 
in the uh, Pegasus Turf integration over Warm Heart. And I'm just not trying to beat National Treasure today, the Preakness winner. Yeah. I'm okay with him. He's an anchor for me on a $60 play. Let's get into it now. The McKnight is the brother race of the La Praviante, which was earlier on. Mm -hmm. And this is a mile and a half on the turf, three turns. Scratch the six, scratch the nine, scratch the 10, scratch the 12, scratch the 14. And some AEs get in, none more so important than the 16. F5. Uh, yep. Where are we starting? We're going to start with uh, Francisco Clemente here. Yeah, let's start with him, okay. and we'll we'll look at him. This is a race at Del Mar, the the Hollywood Turf Cup Grade Two event. This horse was nowhere early on, and I it completely cost him the race. Yeah, watch him level off here. He's going to get beaten in the neck. You know the Peter Brandt colors, white birch of the home bread here for Peter. He is rolling late. Yep. Now he does well. He was on the rail last time, too. Uh, just, uh, Umberto Rispoli, just left him with too much to do. Simple as that. Yeah, it is, and that and that's hard, too. To You know, you're he's never ridden him before. You don't really know when to punch the button, and uh, uh, yeah, and this also kicks off the Tropical oh, Turf yeah. pick three, and that's a, a great bet to play. It's uh, the three last turf races on the day. 15% uh, takeout. It's a $3 minimum. I've got a big ticket today, but I'm going for it here. Uh, this is a, a, a race that I, I'm just I'm using uh, the three here. Uh, Stone Age as well as uh, there you saw Francesco Clemente. Race number 10 I am using three of them i've got star fortress in there hesitantly but the 11 is who i do have on top that is mission of joy i think maybe at a price and then in race number 12 wow what a race i wanted to cut one off maybe to make this a little more budget friendly and this is just a suggested play um integration i do have on top though but yeah. i I love Web Slinger as well today. All right, there you go. Web Slinger going to be a big number in yes. there. That is to be sure. Let's get back to this one now. We just showed you Francisco Clemente. He is the favorite in here, and I yeah. think that's probably uh, right. But we're both going elsewhere. You're, wow, you're going to come back to Stone Age. You got to. This be is my last time. Okay, I'm, last time. I'm there done with it after him. Okay, this is my case for him. Ryan Moore, his only two wins, Jockey Ryan Moore has been aboard for. Yep. You look at this horse's races and go go on where you can watch these replays of him. Uh, when this horse is on the lead, he does not lose. And Ryan Moore knows that because he was the only one to win on him. So here, the last race, we couldn't have showed you the replay. Trust me, I wanted to. We're not going to keep you all day for that. It was a nightmare. Uh, he just was every which way but sideways. And just he wants to go that's he's got to go for it today i'm done with him after this i promise i don't i'm trying i don't see the the win on on my page yeah the win is it was about 2004 for the, yeah okay <laughs> he's got a lot of class <laughs> and you talked to chad brown and i think i thought it was great he was very poignant and said yeah. boy he has frustrated us he is yeah and yeah. he said that he's he's kind of taken it on himself a little yeah. bit because you know what do you do with this horse because we he said he hasn't been able to figure him out maybe ryan moore is the missing piece here i'm getting brendan walsh to the winner's circle All today. Right. Darn it. Uh, Verstappen for me. I think he's got proven mile and a half turf form. He does. What a long striding mm -hmm. horse here. I like to joke. He's not like his namesake, right. Max Verstappen. He doesn't have that quick gears like those Formula One cars, but he's working very, very well. And uh, he's got every every chance in the world. And Frankie DeTore gets aboard yeah. today. I feel like that's going to help. I think that's significant. He suits his riding style, suits you him know, too. Well, an immortal jockey here yeah. on the turf as well. And I think that is a like I said, very significant. Late pick five kicks off in race number nine. It's the inside information, the grade two for Phillies and Mares, four and up $200,000 on the line. Quick look at Samantha's ticket. This pool is guaranteed at 750. I think they probably had 750 in it yesterday. Uh, there might be $2 million in this pool. Yeah, it's going to be huge. Uh, it's all graded stakes. Uh, you know, we talked about the grass races here, but I will touch on uh, race 11, my long shot, Cyclone Mischief, the man who doesn't miss a meal. Uh, we saw him yesterday schooling, hoping he's tighter. He does love this track. Uh, you saw in the Pegasus, I don't, I, I'm adding a couple more horses in this Pegasus turf, and I'm using National Treasure. I'm just going to go down with him. It's a very wide open race, a bar a couple, but we'll get to it later. I just feel like uh, it could be his day. $81 to play. This is a clean race. Nobody yeah. is out of this. The defending champion, Mary Quite Contrary, uh, is in this spot as well. Uh, and you're going with Intrepid 
intrepid daydream. Let's show what happened yep. last time. Uh, she got run off her feet. Don't forget, you could talk more about this. She was here, like, literally off the plane from Laurel, private purchase. Safi just had to run her, and now she's you now been with him a little bit. That helps a lot. I mean, the thing is with this is she's a mare, okay? She's a little older, so... Sometimes when you switch from going to Laurel to South Florida and then boom, you're running against a really good grade three group. I don't care how good you are at Laurel. You've you've got to get acclimated to this, this place. Yep. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And I think she got run off her speech. Spirit Wind was all amped up this day and she forgot to oh, stop. Yeah. And she's darn she's darn good and fast. Um, I am actually on Bluefield, who's running on now, there late. You know is. the Seltzer yeah. colors there. I love her getting an extra half furlong today. Mm -hmm. Listen, I don't care who you like in this race, and you're on Intrepid Daydream, and, and I'm certainly using her as well. They are all like right this on paper. It, this is maybe one of the hardest races. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, the defending champion, Mary Quite Contrary, who is seven for nine here on yeah. the main track at Gulfstream Park. She's in here as well, and she just absolutely blasted them in the rampart yeah. for fun, <laughs> showing a little bit of a new gear, a little yeah. closer that day too. Uh, I mean, you can't play a real ticket. You can, we both have her in second. You can't play a serious ticket without her. Right. Uh, we love her around here. But late pick four in race number 10, and now it's Pegasus time. This is the Philly and Mare Turf, grade two now. Soon to be a grade one, $500,000 on the line at a mile and a 16th on the firm turf course. Um, let's lead with the favorite, or who I assume will be the favorite. I know we're both playing against Star Fortress, but the race starts and it goes through her. Let's show them why, because you want to talk about a, a, a heck of a introduction to U.S. racing, this was it at Churchill Downs. It was very, very impressive here. She didn't even run until the last bit of this race, I feel like. And, you know, everybody's going to look at this and go, oh, well, the Churchill turf course, um, you know, I've seen it, I hear it. I, I don't know what we're going to get today. To be honest, we saw her here schooling. She's very well traveled, especially a horse coming from Europe where they ship them all over. I mean, she just was very impressive. She didn't even switch into her her proper lead until very very late and she just kept on going that was devastating yeah. um got to prove it again today got to yeah. do it over a night and day different kind of turf course out there Same group but boy if you want to you want to announce your presence that is it yeah. to be sure you are toward the outside and now you can talk about mission of joy too the last time everybody saw mission of joy she was tangling with maj who came back and ran a cracker of a second in the breeders cup mile yeah and yesterday Did ran second, second as second. well no. no she ran second to her stable mate let's show the replay here uh to maj and like i said maj yesterday in dubai and i believe it was a group one race ran second her stable mate beat her but here she is. Uh, this is coming off of a colonial race, and that was only her second race uh, in a, a few months. She's had a little bit of time. Now, there you see Maj is the four, who's just a very, very nice horse for Ocean Murphy riding that day. And she tries so hard. She's working <laughs> sure. really, really well right now. I, I think she could be a bomber. Will she class up against this group? I mean, she showed herself pretty well against Maj there, so. Yeah, and I don't know if uh, mile of 16 is going to hurt her any. Maybe a little bit of a cutback. Yeah, might help. Could help her a little bit. Um, long shot for me. I am on the six in here, and that is Ruby Nell, and the path to victory is clear and obvious. We will run as fast as we can, as far as we can. That's all it is yep. there. It's a sin mission. She looked like she traveled here well. We saw her schooling in the paddock yesterday, and she looked great. She's an athlete. Uh, you got to see her on the lead. Unfortunately, Edwin Maldonado, who knows her well, he just got back to riding just yesterday did, yeah. at Santa Anita, which is good to see him back in the saddle. But uh, just too quick here, Frankie DeTori steps up, and he has ridden her before, so take take that. Fluffy Sox is, uh, boy, she's a legitimate grade one performer, just missed in the matriarch. I just worry about her running style. It is going to be sharp for her. She's got to be closer. Yeah. There's no other way to put it here. Uh, she didn't have a ground saving trip that day in the grade one matriarch either. And that, it, that kind of, you know, she got beat by her yeah. other 
other stable other, other. surge ca <laughs> surge capacity who came up the rail. So, and that horse had a much better trip. Yeah, and Samantha caught up with Chad Brown. We'll be airing them. We aired them earlier all yeah. throughout the day to take note of that. Oh, by the way, the defending champions in here are not even on any of our tickets. I did use her in my rainbow, though. Good. That is the eight queen goddess who's going to be a very inviting six. You know, she's six on the line. She's going to be a very inviting price. Full count Felicia. I want to mention full count Felicia out of this race. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that is a big scratch. And the 13 B, my sunshine is out too. Yeah. Race 11, we split up the Pegasus races here with the grade three Hooper, Fred Hooper, 150 on the line here. Scratch out the nine giant game. I think we'll see him doing the turf thing coming up soon. You are on the four Cyclone Mischief. Show him why. Uh, this is just a breeze here that I felt uh, he's looking a lot sharper mm -hmm. uh, than he was for his comeback at Churchill Downs. He hadn't had a start since the Kentucky Derby when he came back at Churchill. He loves this track here. He was running in very tough competition. Uh, he He's really just such a cool horse. He's pretty nonchalant. He schooled great yesterday. Uh, he's just gobbling up this ground. I, I like this. I think he's tighter this time. I'm on Steel Sunshine, yeah. and uh, you love this horse, and he did look good behind yeah, us yesterday. School, look at him str stride yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, he looks great. Uh, he should be much, much sharper today. Now, this is gonna have to run the race of his life, but a lot of horses ha yeah, are gonna have yeah. to yeah. do that. Uh, I want to show you Steel Sunshine, who was last seen running in the local prep for the Pegasus. He's the only horse doing any running in this race late. This was a short stretch finish line race, and uh, he's really the only horse doing any running. He's gonna come on the outside here. He is probably actually better at a one-turn mile. He'll get some speed to run into, and he's gonna be a square price in here. You can hear he is running on late, and Paco knows it's it's over at this point, but right. look at him stride out nicely. Um, I think he could be clever in here. I think so too. He's a big player here. Bobby DeBona doing well. Yes, we like Bobby around <laughs> we here. We do, yeah. Listen, they all got to catch and run down Hijazi. He could, wouldn't shock me if he's four to five in this race. Yep. He is a great talent for Bob Baffert. He was. I think he showed a little bit of commonness in him oh. against his stable mate, Speedboat Beach, though. Uh, I, if he was as good as I thought he was whenever he we won him, yeah. uh, at Santa Anita, I, I thought he was just going to go by. I thought he was a better horse than Speedboat Beach. Maybe Speedboat Beach is just that good. I will say Ghost of Midnight, who he defeated won again yeah. yesterday in the eighth race at Santa Anita. That horse just keeps on winning at any distance. So here you go. They're just going to send him. Yeah, and Speedboat Beach was outside him that whole day, too. He took all the worst of it being down That's inside. I, I agree there. Yeah, so all right, two left, biggest two of the day and the 12th is the Pegasus World Cup turf a million dollars on the line in this grade one will go in a mile and an eighth for the four-year-olds and up uh let's well we both on integration so we'll start it right there now he was beaten up on uh I'm very busy last time at Aqueduct and we'll show you that race right now he has just absolutely been dominant in all three starts for the Hall of Famer Shug McGahee he has uh there's a lot of new things happening here He's going to face older for the first time. This is only his fourth race in his career, but what a killer he's he's been. He's just asserted himself, and he's going to have a lot to prove today. My comment in this race was he took off down the lane like a madman. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt about it, and I think he's uh, he's very live today. Yeah. Now, the, the local prep was won by main event over Kings Max. We'll show you that one. Main event's probably going to do the same thing today. He's yep. probably going to get loose on the lead. Can he beat a better group? Boy, was he game in here. Kings Max made him run. He, Yeah, he did. And for a second, it looked like he was going to get him. But it's crazy. This horse, I, you see him eyeball him, and he says, uh, nope, you're going to stay right exactly where you are. You're not going to go past me. It was very impressive here. That was a Hall of Fame ride by Hall of Famer Javier Castellano. Right. Uh, no doubt about that. Nine to five favorite is Warm Heart. We'll show you her going at it against Males last time yeah. in the Hong Kong Vaz. It's the last start of her career. She's never been this sharp and short on a turf course. Uh, this is a Philly Mare turf, excuse me, at, at Santa Anita, our sister track. I'm a little vulnerable today. I think so. Oh, gosh. It's one of these uh, situations where you live or you die by her here. We're obviously choosing to die by her. Or maybe, I mean, I don't know. Is she, she's good. She's very good. And Spiral that day was so good as World well. World class. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but she's just, we, we, we talked about this a lot. Coolmore kind of throws these Hail Marys sometimes. She's shipping around a lot. Yeah. They've asked to do a lot of her. And she's not a big filly at all 
Her last race was at Sha Tin in Hong Kong, and that was on December 10th. Here she is. Great to see her in Hallandale Beach now, and she'll go on to be a broodmare after this. Two Group 1 wins, albeit against females, right. at a mile and a half. This is going to be a, an about face for her well, yeah. today, no doubt about it. And that's one of the reasons why uh, maybe we went elsewhere. Masterpiece will run on late for you. We've got a lot to talk about of that later on. But let's get to the big one now, because this is the $3 million Pegasus World Cup. A mile and an eighth, four-year-olds and up, a full field of 12. Right now, the 13, the also eligible, is still in. We'll have to need a scratch, Castle Chaos to draw in and of course Pete's upstairs and throughout the day we'll update all of that. We are on the same horse, um, National Treasure, and let's just show them an awesome, now Skippy Longstocking ran well. What a throw down with Horse of the Year, Cody's Wish in the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. It was, and this is a, a colt that I felt like a lot of people were burned uh, with because when they came back, if you bet him at the Belmont, you bet him in the Travers, even in the Awesome again, but that was a wet fast track. That was not a good track. Uh, they got burned by him, and I think he 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 said, "Just hold my beer here. Watch what I can do against Cody's yeah. wish." And Cody's wish, uh, that horse is incredible, and the fact that horse national, yeah, exactly, and the fact that National Treasure just kept him in his sights. I could show you every work of his, and he's working incredible. Yeah, and I think he's the best horse with the running style that wins the Pegasus. Right. Uh, we've run this race several times now. No one has made a late dent in Nobody this race. worse than sitting fourth there you go. Than has won this race. Yeah. Take note of that. Nobody sitting fourth has won worse than fourth. Um, they might go quick early. Hoist the gold's got only one path to victory, and, and that that's is to go. Going, yeah. It's not like I've heard a lot of people, and the people I respect a lot, talking about the pace and thinking it might be hellacious. National Treasure is not a runoff horse. N well, it, nobody's getting past Hoist the Gold. Exactly. Yeah, he's, he can sit just right off of him a little behind, and, yeah. and there you go. And who else wants to go with him? We'll see. But, uh, I mean, nobody's going to run with Hoist the Gold, who, by the way, was on a huge inside speed track bias at Belmont. One of the all-time inside speed yeah. tracks. Uh, that's why Senior Buscador is getting some publicity closed that day. They, they did go crazy early. He's a total fade for me, but that remains to be seen. Yeah. Uh, let's show our local prep, and we did it earlier, but let's show it again because this is O'Connor in Grand Aspen running 1-2. O'Connor's going to come up the fence, a cagey ride here <laughs> by Tyler Gaffleone. Um, you know, Grand Aspen stepped up, and we didn't have him this day, and we, we thought we were out. Oh, yeah. Boy, he ran big. This is a short stretch finish line race, but he is a horse on the come. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, he is. You got to give credit to O'Connor. He loves this distance here. He is a he scares me in this spot here. And Grant Aspen had a work two works back, the big big work in preparation for this that shocked the heck out of me. And yeah, you I said that. Yeah. yeah, and I and I asked Todd about it. I said, "Where did that come from, Trainer Todd Pletcher?" And he was like, I, "That was it, it shocked him as well." But still, I don't think that the Pletcher runners are suited like life is good. No, not yeah. not at all. Where you know, Todd, these are these are. I don't want to call them long shots, but you know, they're not life is good. Right. They need to prove they belong on this national stage. No first mission t for you. I have nothing clever here. I'm just seven eight, right to the hoop okay. here. Um, I talked to Brad Cox, and you know, I think Brad is very happy that he's finally getting races into first mission. Mm -hmm. I feel like first mission is going to run the race of his life today. I don't know where that puts him at 5.40 p.m., yeah. but I think we're going to get his best shot today. I think so, too. Uh, I watched some of his works thanks to Bruno's works yeah. uh, uh, online, and I wasn't a, it's not a way I want to see a horse coming into this race, and I say that because I saw him at the Preakness right. um, and uh, yeah, unfortunately scratched wasn't from that event, run, yeah. but I saw the way he was training there, and then I see him at fairgrounds. But he, Brad Cox doesn't just ship just to, you know, he's, he's got a shot. No, and I don't think the Pegasus has ever had a horse like First Mission. The Pegasus has had the Knicks goes, the Chromes, right. the Arrogates, the Life is Good. The horses, we know how good they are. They come here at the right. top of their game. They come here off Breeders' Cup races. I don't think the Pegasus has ever had a horse like First Mission with an absolute world of upside. I'm excited to see that. Yeah, I feel like the, this whole Pegasus group as a whole, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of older dirt horses right. running right now. And tell, tell me one that's not here yeah. um, because the gang is all here and it's really going to be – them punching their stamp yeah. as uh, the head of the division this race. That's perfectly said, and it's a perfect way to end it because Pete's upstairs with scratches and changes on Pegasus World Cup Day. We're so happy to have you aboard.